that didn't take long, Anthony. When they're here, they're here. This was an opportunity for Anthony to show us, you know, exactly what there is right here. And uh, I gotta admit, you know, I see there's a lot of popping corks on the rods, and I have a preconceived kind notion. Kind of a beginner thing. Yeah, kind of a beginner thing. And Anthony and had a totally different, you know, reason. Whoa, that's a big one. Holy moly. I am now a big believer in the cork. Yes, look at that guy. That is a that shark. Is the biggest fish I've ever caught. Woo! Saltwater Experience, presented by Yellowfin, with Captain Tom Rowland and Captain Rich Tudor. Serious fog, man. <laughs> you got that radar so, uh, on? Yes. You could find yourself in a little bit of trouble in the Mississippi River in the fog, couldn't you? Absolutely. Any advantage that you can give yourself is well worth its weight and gold. It's, it's kind of spooky. It's like Halloween. All the uh, boat traffic coming through there, ships and crew boats, everything else, huh? There's a lot of boat traffic. You have to be really safe. You can monitor the boats on the radio. You can hear the fog horns when they get close. You can see the, the vessels on the radar. And this is, this is like surreal. Awesome first day with Anthony. And then, uh, you know, we get out, have a great, great meal that night. Um, you know, have, have awesome redfish cooked up, flounder cooked up, just, just an incredible uh, lodge. I always love coming here. It's not just the fishing, but the, uh, the whole experience is just, Awesome. There's always cool stories going on. People, you know, events for the day, and and just um, just great food. Yeah. Well, you know, you get here to the lodge, and pretty soon people are going to start collecting around that kitchen. You're going to start hearing the stories about what happened, you know, and you're in the course of the Louisiana fishing. And you know what? Coming from Florida, it sounds like a bunch of doc talk. That's what I call yeah. doc talk. You yeah. know, to where. You know, somebody caught four fish, well, they put a zero on the end of it and they caught 40, you know, but you better pay attention because those stories are probably more than likely well, we are true. We heard the stories that, 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 that night, you know, about the guys that were out there catching those fish. They said, you know, they caught 50 some redfish, you know, in one day. I mean, just, you know, in, in, you know, for February, that's pretty amazing. You know, we've always, you know, heard better, you know, fishing in the fall and summer and, you know, but we were a little early, you know, um, weather was good, but that's some awesome fishing. And to hear those stories and Anthony's, you know, Anthony's one that always downplays it. You know, he's like, yeah, we'll go out and, you know, we'll give it a whirl, there should be some fish. And, um, you know, we get up that next morning and, and, and uh, he, he wanted to take us to a different area. He's like, man, we're just going right, right across the river. We're gonna go through the locks. And uh, sure enough, it was foggy, but it wasn't, it wasn't too bad. And the radar helped us get across safely. And that lock, that's a pretty neat thing. We don't have locks like that in Florida, at least not where I've ever seen. And I guess the river is, uh, is much higher right now than, than, than the bay. So uh, instead of taking a long run around, you want to get across there, just uh, tie up there, wait for this, uh, the lock to, to open its doors. And, and um, literally, I guess it floods the, uh, the water out of the bay and pretty cool stuff. This is called uh, Stricka Lock. It's all been rebuilt since the Hurricane Katrina and perfectly functional. Keeps the river from just flowing through here at, at fast speeds. They'll allow the, the water to fall out the, the bay side and we'll go right on out. This was an opportunity for Anthony to show us, you know, exactly what there is right here. You know, you don't have to go all the way down there. You don't have to go other places. Buras, Louisiana has everything that you need. And Anthony shows up already in the morning. He's tying some, some things on. And, and uh, I gotta admit, you know, I see there's a lot of popping corks on the rods. And, and I, don't, I don't really know a lot about popping corks. I have a preconceived notion of what popping cork fishing is because, you know, a lot of people down our way just anchor the boat, throw out, use the popping corks to catch trout or whatever. And it just, you know, it's it's just a preconceived kind notion. Kind of a beginner thing. Yeah, kind of a beginner thing. And Anthony and had a totally different, you know, reason. The cool thing about these popping corks is they, they make a lot of commotion. They attract fish to your lure that other, otherwise wouldn't see or feel your lure moving through the water. So the popping corks really help to 
call the fish to it. Once you get the fish to it, they either see or smell your jig. They eat it, cork goes down, you know they've got it. It's pretty much. So is a cork, a, is, would you consider that to be a good way to catch a big one or is there better ways to catch a big one or? The, the really big reds really seem to favor these corks. Maybe they, they believe that the noise they're hearing on the top is, is a mullet jumping or a, a crab scurrying across the surface, but whatever that is, it really turns the big fish on. So you catch a couple big ones a year on on, a, on the cork? Absolutely. All, all of the, the big fish that we catch, probably three-fourths of them we catch on these corks. Oh, okay, I'm in. Let's I'm in. Let's go get them. Whoa, that's a big one. Holy moly. I am now a big believer in the cork. Saltwater Experience, presented by Yellowfin, is brought to you by Yellowfin, only in a Yellowfin, by Mercury, by Hawks K, the only key you'll need, and by Motor Guide, Costa Sunglasses, and Power Pole. I wanted to learn how to fish a popping cork. I mean, if this is what we're doing, I, I want to learn. And if Anthony has so much confidence in it, then it's something that we need to know. Hearing him describe it is so different than I think my notion or your notion of what a popping cork was, is he's, he's using the best of both worlds. He's using it like a top water lure, like you know we've done before, um, walking the dog or whatever, popping it on top mm -hmm. um, to get fish's attention. But instead of making them jump up and eat that, now he's got this lure that's going, you know, two, three feet under the surface that's a jig. So it's the best of a top water and a jig all in one. There he is. Got him? Yeah, that's a big fish right there. There's a couple of big ones running around right here. Nice that is job. a good one. Right in between the pops. Man, that's pop, a real pop, fish. Boom. That's, that's the first one we've had it taken dry. Yeah, this is that. a serious, serious redfish. Louisiana redfish. This is where the consumer reports test happens. Is that right? <laughs> is, I, oh, look at him. He just came out. Is that up. your fish or no? no? That was mine. I just love the way Anthony knows that they're, they're way off the point. I would, I would have been fishing tight on the point. He knows that they're out here. The tide's so low, it was just a dead giveaway. They, they don't, you, as, a, as the tide comes in today, they'll, they'll move right up on that point. You're getting your workout. Yes, sir. Oh, that's a big boy. I like him like that. That one's serious right there. Full grown. The idea, I guess, is that you draw the fish over there and you're not making too much noise with it because some days that's going to spook the fish. But you draw them over there and they're like, hmm, here's a big jerk bait. I'll just eat that. And you know what? Lo and behold, it worked. The cork goes down and I pull back and the drag starts singing out. And I, I'm a popping cork believer. You know, <laughs> it didn't I, take much, did it? I, I, popping cork, yeah, I'm going to have a popping cork on everything. Whoa, that's a big one. Holy moly. Wow. I am now a big believer in the cork. You broke in. I have never, I don't know what I was doing all those years. Wow. Just like when I learned how to chum in the harbor for tarpon. Woo! That is a big redfish. Whoa, look at all the spots on him, too. Yeah, bring him in here. Let me have that fella. <laughs> That's nice a beast. Nice job, Tom. Look at all the spots right on him. Wow. It's awesome when you get a fish that big with those sorts of spots on them that That's really awesome. make them light up in a picture. <laughs> Anthony, nice job, Anthony. Man. You said you wanted, wanted a big one. He put you right on him, didn't he? You know, a lot of people will say about you know, the biggest fish of their life or whatever. It was as long as my leg, man. But you know what? I picked that fish up and it was exactly as long as my leg. I mean, that thing, I mean, that's a, that's a nice fish. I mean, I don't care where you're from, what you do, that is a nice fish. And, and the fish that we were catching, those are not the biggest ones that are here. No, you could even no. catch bigger ones than that. As long as my leg and slightly heavier. <laughs> <laughs> nice job, Tom. That was wonderful. Whew. Now I am a professional cork fisherman. <laughs> Well, well, I think he's got two or three mullet right in that belly. You'd be surprised how big a mullet that fish can eat. Yeah. I'm sure of it. Some days you'll see him popping these mullet on top. Yeah. So, Come here, for that. Hey, 
He's ready. And come on. Give him a nudge right here, and yep. he'll, and he'll take off. There he goes. That's all it awesome. takes. I mean, think about how many, how often we fish around the mangroves. And one of the techniques that we've, you know, essentially felt like we have to do is we have to take lots of live bait and chum so that the fish will come out from the mangroves. And obviously that works great. Some days you don't have live bait. I mean, think about what we're doing there. We're doing the same thing. There's yeah. fish. He knew there were fish on this point. Now, they seem to be coming from every direction. It wasn't like they were under the mangroves. But if we go to our mangrove points, do that same technique, I think some of those fish will come out from under the mangroves, hearing that noise, and potentially catch them. Sure. And, bait. you know, I mean, this seems revolutionary to us, but there's lots of people that fish with a popping cork all the time. Sure. And whether it's a popping cork, or sight fishing, or using the trolling motor, or poling your boat, or wading or doing whatever, it's a, it's a technique that's outside of our normal fishing. And when you reach outside of your normal fishing and you go with somebody that knows this and you expand that, you become a much better angler. Here's the Anthony Randazzo super grip. So uh, what do you think about yeah. transporting a few hundred of those back to the- A few the... hundred thousand maybe. I mean, these were all nice fish, you know, heavy, mean looking redfish. And a lot of those fish, you can see the scrapes and scars where they were getting down in there. I caught one, I'm looking at it, and it's got scratches all over the top. And I'm thinking, that doesn't look like my line went across. You know, I asked Anthony, you know, what's up with that? And he's like, oh man, they feed around all this stuff and they get so aggressive that they get all scratched up. And also they're in these schools and they'll, they'll beat each other up. Man, that is fun. I'm a true cork believer now true believer. Saltwater Experience, presented by Yellowfin, is brought to you by Lowrance and the all-new HDS Gen 2 Fish Finder Chart Plotter. Yeti Coolers, wildly stronger, keep ice longer. Bass Pro Shops, your adventure starts here. And by King Sailfish Mounts. Marine Formula Stable. And Scott Fly Rods. We have a seafood safety program that we're doing for all of Louisiana. And it's a three year project that we're doing that's um, BP funded and we're sampling every, all seafood in Louisiana, everything from oysters, shrimp, crabs, you know, all the fin fish, everything that's edible that people consume commercially or recreationally. So a typical work week for us is, is you know, obviously we check the weather first, make sure the conditions are safe, and we go out and we catch offshore fish. The offshore fish, we have to collect them on rod and reel. So that makes it, makes it fun, but a little more challenging as well. And um, we have three zones in the Gulf. We have an Eastern zone, which is Mississippi to Grand Isle, Central zone, Grand Isle to Lafayette, then Western is gonna be Lafayette to Texas. Uh, we have a list of about 18 species that we go after. We start with the species that are getting consumed the most during that time of the year, you know, depending on the season. If the cobia are migrating through, we focus on cobia first, and then work our way through the species on what we can get all the way to swordfish, you know, deep, real deep water fish in a thousand feet, you know, top golden tile fish. Um, we go out there, we catch the fish, then we, you know, have to write the longitude, the latitude down. We um, weigh the fish, we measure it, and then we cut two pounds out of each fish. We wrap them in foil, and we have certain protocols we have to follow, and we get those fish and we send them to two independent labs, and they test it for hydrocarbons and, you know, dispersants and different chemicals that came from the oil spill. The name of the website's golfsource.org, and it's, it's pretty real time. I mean, you can go on there and you can click on anything from an oyster, a crab sampled in, you know, a bear terrier or big lake, and then all to the offshore fish. It'll show you where it was caught and then what the results are. And there's nothing alarming. I mean, at the beginning, obviously, there was oyster beds that got shut down and, you know, the things that can't move away from the oil. But in the fin fish that I'm collecting offshore, there's nothing that's been found. I mean, our seafood's probably the safest seafood in the world. I mean, we're sampling seafood in ways that we never thought we could because we could never afford it. You know, I mean, it's, we're doing, you know, we're sampling on top of sampling, you know, making sure that nothing slips through. I mean, everything's good here to go in Louisiana. You know, I go out there and collect all these different fish, and I don't think anyone would know more than our crew 
that Louisiana seafood is the safest and best out there. There he is, got him. It was your turn. Nice job. That was cool, I was way up on that point. Another good fish. Let's see if I can get a double. I got extra confidence in this, this cork now. I put that uh, new penny, like you said, on there. Oh, took my advice before I took my advice. So after I saw you and Anthony catch a couple of those big fish, you know, I, I was feeling a little, you know, you know, I, I didn't know if I was doing something wrong. I even asked him, is my leader too short? You know, I didn't know, you know, what it was. And, and he had said, well, he would, I heard Anthony mention about, you know, switching over to a, a new penny color, a different color. Um, so I took his suggestion before he did, and I put on a different one. And really interesting there, we'd gotten past that point. You guys were still casting out in the middle of the open area, which seemed strange to me, but of course that's where Anthony was casting, so that's where you were casting. Um, I naturally was thinking that the fish would be on that point, um, so I just started to cast back towards that point, and, uh, and sure enough, finally got a bite, and boom, my first fish of the day. Another nice fish, look at that thing. Woo. They're all studs. You're gonna have me investing in some of these corks before I head back. Good fish. Yeah, man, all go. right. Another nice one. <laughs> that guy is serious too. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Yeah. Yes, A lot that of red fish. Wow. Anthony, how old is that fish? That's probably a four and a half year old redfish. He's he's just now over the slot. He's about 28 and a half inches long. Safe. Safe for now. He's safe for now. That's good. He's gonna go out there, or she's gonna go out there and make a bunch more redfish for us in the short term. That's great, man. Well, cool. Awesome. It's a beautiful fish. I'm ready to get another one. I don't have them like that back home, brother. <laughs> That's nice. That'd be about as big as any of I've ever, ever caught in the Keys. Really? Yeah. It just seems like uh, they go out, go out, they come to Louisiana, I guess. <laughs> I guess they do. Thanks, man. You're welcome. Saltwater Experience, presented by Yellowfin, is brought to you by Quantum Rods and Reels, fishing at a quantum level. By the Florida Keys and Key West, come as you are. And by Corrosion Block, Gamakatsu, and Loadmaster Boat Trailers. Want to be on our show? Check out our Facebook page and find out details on how you can be a guest star on Saltwater Experience. You know, once I got that first fish off right off that point, then you guys started to come back in there. I mean, I know we got a double going. It was just like a real frenzy started to develop right on that point. It was really cool. I guess the fish were starting to stage there and action brings more action. Those popping corks were working and these fish just, uh, just it was an awesome, awesome day. Yeah, well, I was glad that you put that new penny on because before that we were killing you. I didn't think you were gonna catch anything, <laughs> man. And you did, you, start, you started looking in a different area and throwing over there and you know, you had the spot, you know, but it took you a while. Then you got it. That was cool. On that point where you're that time. Right up on. Rich's fish is gonna lap the boat. I might even pull up the trolling motor for you, Rich. That's a serious fish right there. I don't want to tangle you up in this thing. Oh yeah, that's, that's real, my best. That's a real, Woo! real fish. This is awesome, Anthony, awesome. That's what it's all about. It's been way too long since I've been down here. Yeah, you know what I really like about this place, you know, Buras or Venice, Louisiana, is that you could really go out and do the offshore fishing and in the same day, come back in and do the inshore fishing. I mean, the fishing is so close here and there's so much variety that it really makes this place unique and special. And I've said many, many times that if I wasn't a guide in the Florida Keys, I'd want to be a guide in Louisiana because 
you know, if you're an offshore guide, I mean, my goodness, the, the, the offshore fishing here is just out of I'd this I'd say world. arguably the best in the United States. And, and, and then the inshore fishing, I mean, if you're a red fisherman, there is no better place. No, this is the best in the world for redfish. That's not even, that's undisputed. Cooler than just the fishing for me is this, just this experience, this lodge experience, to get back down here and fish with Anthony, to, to get back to Paradise Plus Lodge. I mean, this place is, it is paradise. And yeah, no doubt. I've always loved coming here and this trip, we learned a few new things and caught a lot of big fish and I'll definitely be coming back. He's got that darker color. Too. And that is really a nice fish. He's got a little more red to him, but you know, this, this top layer is fresh water, so it's a little milky looking, a yeah. little stain. The bottom layer is salt water, it's greener. So there's fish that are coming in with that salt water on this rising tide that have been out off the coastal waves. And they're coming in here now and they're gonna be a little bit redder than the others. That's awesome, man. I'll catch that caliber fish all day long. Wow. Just can't believe the, the, uh, the numbers of fish like that you have. Awesome, man. Bye-bye, baby.